Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor, and today we're going to be looking at this NDB runway 14 approach into Homerville using minimum equipment in the mighty Cessna 152 Bug Smasher. Okay, so here we are in this very simple cockpit, and we're going to be doing this approach with nothing more than the ADF needle, the VOR, and a good dose of luck. And as you can see, we have no GPS or DME, so no distance measuring equipment whatsoever. So we'll start by tuning the NDB which is on a frequency of 209, and we'll put that into the ADF box over on the right-hand side over here. Once that's done, we need to identify the NDB by pushing the ADF button on the audio panel over here, and comparing the Morse code that we hear to the Morse code shown on the approach plate, and it should spell out H-O-E. So that seems to be identifying correctly, and the ADF needle appears to be pointing in a sensible direction as I would expect it to, so I'd say this is good to use. The next thing to tune is this Waycross VOR which is on a frequency of 110.2 with an identifier of AYS. So that's identifying correctly as well. Now the reason that we're tuning in this VOR is because setting up this 229 radial from that VOR will allow us to identify this intersection called Muzzler. Now the reason that we want to identify this intersection is because it will allow us to actually fly to a lower minimum because we can identify our distance from the airport using this intersection. So if we couldn't identify Muzzler, so for example if we didn't have the VOR instrument, then we could only go down to 820 feet. But because we can identify Muzzler, we can go down to 620 feet in this case. So what I'm doing here is using the OBS knob to set up the radial on the VOR instrument. I'm going to set the 229 radial at the bottom of the instrument. The reason I'm doing that is because if I set it up at the bottom, it won't reverse sense. So that means that it will read in the proper sense and therefore it won't be confusing for us. Now, I mean, at the top of the instrument, it'll read 049. If that doesn't make sense to you at this point, don't worry, it'll become very clear later. So that's just about everything set up, and uh, we don't have any more equipment to set up even if we wanted to. So for situational awareness, we're currently going westbound, and uh, the NDB is showing to be on a relative bearing of 30 degrees to the right of the nose. That puts us to the southeast of the NDB, around about here. So we'll shortly be making a right turn towards the beacon. But before we do, my direction indicator and compass seem to have gone slightly out of sync, so I need to synchronize those first. You'll see the compass is reading a heading of approximately 260, whereas the DI is reading a heading of approximately 290. So I need to use the knob on the left hand side of the DI here in order to synchronize the direction indicator to the compass. So we're in a right turn now. Notice how quickly the relative bearing indicator has moved from 30 degrees to 60 degrees. This means that we're quite close to the station. When the needle's pointing directly up, we're inbound straight to the station in a zero wind scenario. In real life, there'd be an error called ADF dip error, which causes the head of the needle to lean towards the direction of turn by around 10 degrees for this angle of bank. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be simulated in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so we can't really account for it here. So I've leveled the wings 10 degrees early there or so, so I need to come 10 degrees or so more to the right. So around northbound should probably do the trick. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we're northbound there and the needle's pointing pretty much directly up. So now all we really need to do is hold this heading until we cross the station. So we'll know that we've crossed the station when the needle starts to flip around and there it goes. So it's starting to flip around there, which means that we've passed the station and now we can continue outbound on the procedure. So you'll see that the outbound bearing on the procedure is 318 degrees. So I'll turn to that heading initially and then see what the needle's doing. If we have a look at the vertical profile, now that we've crossed the NDB, there is an altitude restriction of 1800 or above. So I'll start descending now. You'll also see that we have an instruction here to remain within 10 nautical miles of the NDB. With no GPS or other means of measuring this, we need to use dead reckoning. That's why I've started the timer. Anyway, more about the timing in a second. Let's take a look at our tracking first. So we want to be taking a 318 degree bearing outbound from this NDB. You see at the moment our heading's 310 and the tail of the needle is pointing 10 degrees to the right of the nose. That's looking about right, so I'm going to start making a turn now towards the outbound track of uh, 318. And then we'll have a look and see what the needle's doing then. So I've made that right turn there, I'm going to level the wings, and you see the needle's now pointing 10 degrees to the left of the nose. 
So that means I need to come to the right slightly in order to bring that back on track. So I'll go for a heading of about 330 initially and see how that works out. Now remember, it's a relative bearing indicator. So every time you turn, that needle is going to move. So with the 330 heading, we're looking for the needle to be showing about 10 degrees to the left if we were on track. But you see it's gone more than that. It's about 15 to 20 degrees to the left. So we need that needle to come back in towards the nose of the aircraft. Now it's not happening, so I've come to the right slightly more in order to make that work, which means that we're now looking for around about 20 degrees to the left before we start to make that turn back. There it is, it's looking good. So let's make that turn back now to the 318 track heading and hold that wings level here and you'll see now the needle is pointing directly up towards the nose so we've got the tail of the needle now on the N uh, which for all intents and purposes here is the nose of the aircraft we're now uh, just above 1800 feet as well so we're going to level off the aircraft here and now all we have to do is maintain that tail of the needle where it, exactly where it is and we're happy uh, so if it does drift left or right then we just need to make a turn in order to pull the needle back to where we want it to be. And just adding some power there as we level off to maintain the speed. Now remember this is a zero wind example so everything's going to match up pretty well. Now when there's wind it does make it a little bit more complicated but we'll cover that in a different video. Okay so let's talk about the timing. So we don't have any way of measuring our distance from the NDB but we have to stay within 10 nautical miles of the beacon for the procedure. This requires some dead reckoning and some maths. So if we turn to the final approach at 1800 feet, based on a 3 degree approach which is 300 feet per nautical mile, we'd want to be about 6 nautical miles as we turn the final approach. To allow for intercepting the final approach we might like an extra mile or so. So if we commence the procedure turn at or just after 6 nautical miles from the beacon, that should provide enough distance. We therefore need to calculate the time required to fly in this direction to cover 6 nautical miles over the ground. The winds I've set up in the sim are light so the ground speed should be relatively similar to our airspeed here. So if we call the ground speed 90 knots then, we could do a speed distance time calculation to figure this out. So the time required is 6 over 90 and then multiply that by 60 to get it into minutes. That gives us a 4 minute outbound required for the 6 nautical miles to be covered. And as we're planning to turn at 6 miles, this gives us plenty of margin for error to stay within the 10 nautical miles required for the procedure. Now if you're finding any of this too advanced or difficult to understand, I do have some more basic NDB videos uh, which you can watch which I'll link in the description. And that way you can understand the principles a bit better and then work yourself up to flying the approach later. So we're just coming up to the four minutes now and you'll see on the procedure here the next thing we have to do is to make a left turn to track 273 degrees outbound on this procedure turn. We'll maintain that for a minute once the wings are level and then make a right turn to 093 track to come back inbound and re-intercept the 138 track inbound towards the airport. Okay so I've just started that left turn now. I'm going to keep this turn going until we get to 273 degrees. Wind corrected obviously, but no wind in the simulator here. And then once we hit that heading, I'm going to level the wings and then start the timer. And we're looking for one minute here. Okay, so the wings are level now and I've started the timing. So this 273 heading is still taking us slightly away from the airport, which is why I started the turn at around 6 miles. Because I knew that this heading would take us away plus the right turn that we're about to make is also going to take us a bit more away from the airport as well. So that should give us plenty of distance in order to capture the final approach and start the descent without going past the 10 nautical miles that we need to stay in. And what we can also do as we're doing this turn is have a cheeky little look at the ADF needle for situational awareness. So we know that that ADF needle is pointing directly towards the NDB. So what are we expecting to see? So we're on this 273 heading here, heading outbound on the procedure turn. So what we'd expect is to see the needle pointing to the left towards the NDB, just between the trailing edge of the wing and the tail. So we're looking at about 120 degrees to the left for the relative bearing. So let's have a look and see if that matches. Yeah, so that's looking about 140 degrees, so that's looking pretty good. And there's the minute expired, so we'll start that right turn now towards the 093 track, which is inbound on the procedure turn towards the final approach track. And we're keeping these turns here at standard rate, or rate one turn as we call it in Europe. 
And you can calculate this standard rate turn by taking your airspeed, dividing it by 10 and adding 7. So we're doing about 90 knots now. If we divide that by 10, it gives us 9 plus an extra 7 is 16 degrees. So let's have a look at our angle of bank here. So yeah, we're doing about 16 degrees angle of bank. And what we can also do is cross check that with the turn coordinator here, which will allow us to make sure that that's correctly calibrated. As we establish ourselves onto the inbound portion of this procedure turn, we're going to be looking at the relative bearing and we want to start our turn to the final approach at or just before the needle is showing 45 degree relative bearing to the right because that will be the final approach track. So if we're heading on 093 plus an extra 45 degrees will be 138 which is the final approach track. Okay, so we're just coming up to that 093 heading now. I'm going to level the wings, have a look at the ADF, and that's actually showing 35 degrees relative bearing to the right, which means that we need to keep the turn going in order to establish onto this final approach track without going through it. And because of this, I've increased the angle of bank slightly to avoid going through that final approach track so that we intercept it quite nicely. All right, so we're about to hit that 138 heading. I'm gonna level the wings here, have a quick look at the relative bearing indicator. That's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna reduce the power and start the descent now. So now that we're established on the final approach track, we can descend to 820 feet or above before we get to the muzzler intersection which I'll talk to you about a little bit more as we go down the approach. So first what I'm going to do is raise the nose slightly and uh, reduce the rate of descent. That will allow us to slow the speed down to within the flap safety range, uh, which is 85 knots in the Cessna 152. And once we're within 85 knots, I'm going to lower the flaps to 10 and I'm going to establish an 80 knot descent at around about the three degree approach if I can. Now obviously because we don't have any actual distance readouts it's probably better to get ourselves down to the required altitude a little bit quicker if we can because uh, that way we can break out of the clouds and get visual all right so we're just passing through 1200 feet there you can see that we've just got contact with the ground and if you have a look ahead you should be able to see what looks like it might be the aerodrome beacon flashing there in green and white and although that's a good sign, it's not enough to continue the approach beyond minimums. So we'll just have to bear that in mind for now. Now we are forward tracking the NDB now, so we're following the head, which means that if the head of the needle goes to the left of where we want it to be, we need to turn to the left and get on the other side of the needle to push it back to the correct track. If it goes to the right, then we need to do the opposite and turn to the right further than the, how far the needle's deflected in order to push the needle back in towards the track that we want to be at. Okay, so we're now coming up to that altitude restriction of 820 feet before the muzzler intersection. So we need to add some power and level off here. So we can see in a the distance there, that's definitely the aerodrome beacon that's flashing away, but still we don't have the runway environment in sight, so we still can't continue below minimums at this stage. But that's okay because we can actually go down to 620 feet because we can identify the muzzler intersection. And the way that we could do that is earlier on, we set up the 229 radio from the Waycross VOR. And we put that in the OBS as a two indication with 049 uh, showing at the top. Now, you'll see the needle here. When we start to come towards the muzzler intersection, we'll start to move in towards the center of the OBS. And that means that we're coming up to the muzzler intersection. Once it crosses through the middle, that means that we've passed the muzzler intersection and then we can actually start our descent down to 620 feet which are the minimums for the approach and this is actually really useful because as you can see we're showing about two to four degrees deflection off of the muzzler intersection here so we're coming up to it we still can't see the runway all we can see is the aerodrome beacon there which is not enough to continue past the minimums as i've already said so this will allow us to get a little bit lower and hopefully get a better view of the airport and hopefully see the runway so it actually really helps us get into the airport using this kind of non-precision approach with high minimums. And there's a CDI needle in the middle. So we're now at the muzzler intersection. So let's reduce the power and then start that descent down to 620 feet and hopefully we'll get the runway in sight. And that looks like we've got the uh, runway edge lights there and the threshold in sight. So that means that we are good to continue the approach now. Now you'll notice that we're not quite lined up with the runway. And that's because if we have a look at the approach plate here, the final approach track of 138 is not coincident with the actual runway heading, which is 141. 
So that does put us a few degrees off the, the actual runway track, uh, which means we're going to have to make an adjustment when we get visual, which we're going to do now. So we're now established on the runway track. I've uh, configured the aircraft flaps 30 and I'm going to slow the aircraft down to 55 to 60 knots now and I will continue visually flying this approach. And you see here that the visibility is still pretty murky and we've got all these trees below us as well on the final approach here. So I'm happy to stay on or even slightly above the visual glide path at this stage. So I'm happy to stay on whites uh, and definitely no lower than two whites and two reds at this point. All right, so that's pretty much the hard work done now. So now it's just a matter of pointing the aircraft where we want it to go, which is about 1,000 feet past the threshold of the runway there. Staying on the pappies or even slightly above with this forest underneath us, with, especially with this bad visibility. And maintaining the speed. Uh, so we're gonna do that by adjustments to the power. And we're gonna maintain the 55 to 60 knot speed that we wanna be over the threshold. And now we've cleared the trees so we don't have to worry about staying high anymore. So we can just get ourselves on the vazies, I called them pappies earlier, they're actually visual approach slope indicators, not pappies. And now we're coming up to the threshold so we can forget about the vazies now and just ease ourselves down into ground effect. Once we do that we can close the throttle and then we just hold off until the main gear touches down. And that was an NDB approach like it would have been done in the 60s, not a magenta line inside. I hope you learned something, if you did like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.